Our bodies are constantly breaking down and repairing. In fact, people will often tout the impressive fact that in seven years, nearly every cell in your body will be replaced. While it's been determined that this isn't entirely true, certain cells in the brain last your entire lifetime, it still really hammers home the importance of giving your body the raw materials it needs to replace itself with. Second to water, amino acids make up most of your body. While water is the filler, amino acids are the structure. Cells that make up your muscle tissue and organs are constantly being lost and replaced, creating a demand for new amino acids to take their places. If you engage in any type of training, you increase the breakdown rate even further. Staying alive and healthy means giving your body a constant supply of replacements through the food you eat, especially if one of your goals is to add muscle mass. In that case, you'll want to take in not only a sufficient amount, but the optimal amount. This is why getting all the amino acids we need in our diets is so important. Lucky for us, scientists have determined the exact blend of amino acids we need in our diet. And when they all show up in one food source, it even has a name, protein. That's all protein is, a blend of amino acids that are essential to humans. So essential to health, in fact, it's even been shown that if you aren't getting enough protein in your diet, simply adding more will aid in fat loss, getting you to that healthy body composition. In a 23-week study, bringing protein intake up from 12% of the diet to 23% was able to reduce fat mass by 2.8 kilograms. That's 7 pounds. A lot of the time, proteins are found in complete food sources, which also contain the other two energy-producing macronutrients, fats and carbs. The issue becomes, in today's world, we are surrounded with a lot of carbon fat-rich foods, both of which provide us energy, energy which will get stored as fat if we don't use it. So with all the benefits of protein, a lot of the time people will want to increase just their protein intake. Typically, I would recommend just picking leaner foods, but life happens and it isn't always feasible. While it's pretty tricky to find foods which are only protein, supplements can get very close. Simply put, protein supplements try to be just that, protein without the other two macronutrients, fat and carbs. Whey is one of the most popular types of protein supplement. First identified by Olaf Hammerstam, the renowned Swedish biochemist, whey protein is a component of milk and thus a byproduct of the cheese making process. Cheese makers figured out that if you take the excess liquid left over when you make cheese curds and concentrate it, you can make a powder that's up to 80% protein, while also containing immunoglobulins which help keep you healthy, and a few carbs and fats. These are called whey protein concentrates. Then researchers took it a step further, realizing that they could purify it and isolate the protein. Two competing methods of purification developed. One group of people felt that a combination of micro and ultra filtration was the way to go, while another group felt that ion exchange was preferable. These two methods deliver what's called whey protein isolates, and both are very low in anything other than protein. In fact, whey protein isolates are usually over 90% protein, you can buy both today. The primary difference is that the filtration method allows slightly larger molecules through, including a casein fragment which has some immune system benefits. While whey protein isolates are over 90% protein, there were some people who wanted something that was even more pure, such as labs which were doing testing. This led to the development of whey hydroisolate. This is an even purer form of protein, up to 99%. However, it is highly processed so it costs more to buy and has lost all of the immune-boosting effects. It is also known for not tasting that great. I'm going to focus on whey isolates, which are the most common type of whey protein. So how do they stack up versus other protein sources? For a long time, the go-to measure was the protein efficiency ratio. This 100-year-old method depended on feeding protein to baby rats and then measuring their weight gain from a single gram of protein. Anything above 2.7, the score of casein, was considered good. Whey scored 3.2, but as time went on, more issues arose due to the fact that human and rats are different. This is perfectly illustrated by the fact that human milk actually performed poorly on this test, which makes sense considering human milk contains just 8.5 grams of amino acids per liter, rat milk contains 86.9 grams, that's four times more than cow's milk. Over time, various other measures were developed, biological value, net protein utilization, and protein digestibility corrected amino acid scores. These were all designed to test how bioavailable the protein is. 
In other words, if you eat 100 grams of protein, how much of it actually gets digested by your body and how much simply passes through you? If a protein is particularly difficult to break down in our body, it performs worse on these tests. In all of them, whey does exceptionally well. That's one of the big selling features of whey. The protein from whey is very bioavailable. While the body is never able to use 100% of a protein you eat, whey is about as close as you can get. So, so far the benefits of whey protein. It's a source of protein which doesn't come packaged with fat and carbs. That's good. It's also very bioavailable, meaning if you're getting 40 grams of whey protein, most of it is actually going to be used by your body. That's not where the benefits stop though. Remember how I mentioned protein is comprised of various amino acids? Well, these amino acids all have different functions in the body. It also happens that whey is very high in a specific one, leucine which is one of the three primary BCAAs. This is big because leucine is one of the primary amino acids responsible for triggering muscle protein synthesis, which is the building of muscle. I've actually already made a whole video on leucine, which I'll link to if you're interested in learning more. Whey protein's high leucine content is basically its third big benefit. Now there are lots of different sources you can get protein from, but based on the fact that whey is mostly just protein, very bioavailable, not too expensive, and has a high leucine content, I would say it's always a great choice. I'll link to my video on leucine as well. Until next time, D-Man signing off.